Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I'm going to be working on a fast and loose tonalist oil painting. Now um, before I get started just want to let you know down below I have a whole bunch of uh, links if you'd like to support this channel. I have a um, Patreon account with exclusive content. I also have a Buy Me A Coffee account. So uh, please consider liking, following, and subscribing. That being said, in front of me, I have an 8x10 piece of gesso board by Ampersand. And what I have out so far is Williamsburg Pompeii Red and Williamsburg Sap Green. And I just poured out some um, Galkin. With this approach, this is an approach that I learned from, from watching um, videos by prominent artists Stuart Davies, Dennis Sheehan, and David Usher. It's a very um, fast and loose uh, textural approach, and it coincides with um, kind of the tonalist approach and tonalist movement. All right, so I'm mixing these two together, and I'm now going to kind of make up my imaginary landscape. I don't have anything in mind, but we'll play around and we'll see what takes place. It kind of gives a nice old master feel to the painting. I'm not sure if it's because of the, the browns and the reds and the ochres, but it's a really fun, fast and loose approach. So with this, the main things I try to keep in mind is the tonal value, how dark or light something is, and the um, texture that's being produced. And then from there, as I add elements, I try to pay attention to linear perspective, meaning you know the size and the shape, the direction of everything. But there is some atmospheric perspective being used, but now that I think of it, I don't think I truly focus on it too much. Put these in. No, I'm going to want a tall crop of trees here. And I'm just going to kind of scrub it in. And I'm going to go back and forth using my paper towel to um, wipe it back and uh, lighten things up or soften things up, or add texture. I'm just going to throw some pigment in the sky just so I can start moving things around. Now the final painting that takes place today Chances are it may not be the final work itself. Um, I may, at a later date, come back over it and glaze over it. I may do kind of lo localized glazing or scumbling. Um, and that adds an entirely different element and depth to these paintings. So it can be thought of as a finished product. Uh, some people like it for that aesthetic value. Um, it could also be looked at as an underpainting, as um, kind of initial sketch for stuff that goes over it. And that's um, you know for you to decide what you want to do and what you prefer. But using such a limited palette, and if you do this with watercolor, um, you could do two color experiments. I have a lot of videos up on YouTube uh, trying two color combinations. If you do that with, um, I'm assuming acrylic, other things, you really start taking out one of the confusing elements, that being color. Um, a lot of artists, will recommend limiting a palette, and they limit a palette for a few reasons. 
Uh, a limited palette, first off, as a recommendation for newcomers, it really helps um, take out like the guesswork and um, the decisions that have to be made with what color uh, you're, you're trying to get and mix and work with. Limited palette um, you know, pulls that away. The other thing is, is that with fewer colors, you could achieve more of a harmony throughout the painting by having that limited um, access. So those are two great reasons just to play in this type of style, especially considering oil painting can be very overwhelming. And, you know, for me, painting is, you know, it's a hobby, it's, a, it's fun. Uh, filming the videos, their hobby. It's not so much like a business or anything like that. Down the line, I would like it to become one. You know, maybe when I retire from uh, being a school teacher. But it's it's fun, and you know, some people get you know discouraged by the price of oil painting. And um, honestly, it's not too too expensive of an investment if you have that limited palette that's another um positive to it and then of course if you could sell your art you know and put that money back into the hobby that's always you know really great that's why i always say with these uh, videos if you follow along with any of my tutorials you have my express permission to um to sign your name to it and to sell it so if anybody ever says, oh, I want that painting from you, you have my permission. Because I want you guys to be able to afford art supplies, to be successful, and to just have fun. And that's also why I also mention um, other YouTube artists because I want you guys to um, have a lot of different resources and avenues. And who knows, maybe you might watch this one video and then you hear me mention Stuart Davies, you go look him up and you wind up watching him. Maybe you don't come back over here. That's totally fine. You found you know, what you enjoy and what works for you. That's the most important thing. For lack of a better term, I'm not trying to uh, bogart your viewership. That phrase bogart to hold on to something comes from Humphrey Bogart, the actor. And apparently he would, um, when he would smoke his cigarettes, he would uh, dangle it on the end of his lip and it would just kind of hang on. So to bogart something is to hang on to something. You see, I kind of took a lot of definition out and softened things up quite a bit. Um, in the last couple of oil paintings, I've been doing that a lot. Um, I'm kind of enjoying going back to such a um, soft feel and then building back on top of it. And I believe that might have some sort of relationship between that and my watercolor painting. Watercolor, I like to paint wet and wet in the beginning. So it's just a fun back and forth style. I think I'll let this be water right here and I'll have a reflection come down. I 
I may start relying on other pigments just to kind of push the, the darkness and maybe the light in other directions. But we'll see. Soften this out. Um, I have some Q-tips that I'm going to use to really kind of scrub back to the white of the gesso board. Give myself kind of a glow along the horizon. I can use this to soften up as well. I think what might be a good idea, kind of get darker tone higher up in the sky. Kind of get a gra gradation from darker to lighter as we move down in the frame. Tree is going to have to have more oomph to it to help it stand out against the background. It doesn't need to stand out perfectly. kind of aggressively digging in to create that texture and I'm going to come back and forth with it portion start pulling out trunks and branches I do want some visual aspects back here that are going to stop the eye from going off. I also have a tendency, and this is for any medium that I'm working on, is to move around. 
so that I'm kind of developing everything at once. Um, so that the same amount of effort goes into each location of the painting. I dropped some Q-tips and the cats are all about it. Confiscated. Let's see how we're looking. Yeah. Now, with water, I find that those horizontal strokes really help. Um, I kind of always did that, but I saw in a um, video by Eric Kopel, I think I'm pronouncing that right. He is just a fantastic painter, and he uh, paints in the tradition of the Hudson River Valley movement. And every so often, they will show a few, like, free minutes of one of his videos. Um, and he actively posts on the Facebook pages, um, the Tonalism Fellowship, I believe, and the Hudson River Valley Painters page. Anyway. Um, in his video, he had talked about thinking about water as a flat plane receding into um, into the painting. So it's all on the same level, the water. And those horizontal strokes really do help. I mean, I took the Q-tip from you. It's not here. It's not here, buddy. Darkening these tonal values in the sky. Also, I don't know if I mentioned I'm painting flat so that I can um, film easier. I think down the line, if this channel ever really, really takes off, I'll invest in a camera that I can set up behind me or on a different angle. Uh, I think I want to introduce another color at this point. So let me pause the camera. Okay, so I just put out ivory black and ultramarine. I picked those two because they mix together um, in common companies mix them together. Uh, a blue and a black to make uh, a Payne's gray. And I'm going to use that as like a dark element to start mixing into these. Sometimes I feel like it goes too starkly. The stark is too, is that the right word, too um, drastic of a change. So I'm going to put it in, but I'm going to wipe it out and soften it back. where I want it to be at. I'm not sure if this is just too much. Let me mix it with um that Pompeii Red. I do like my darks along water banks.
bring this landmass or brass out in front some. Tammy is going crazy right now. Kind of putting in a little bit of this dark mix in the sky. Rita is kind of a dark cloud formation. I'm just scrubbing and wiping. Let's go back over to this tree. Let me pause for a second just to take it all in. All right. I want to really get back to the white here. So I'm using that Q-tip just to scrub that paint off. That's going to come down here. If I bring a little bit of that light on the other side. Let me, uh, for a bit of that ultramarine blue in this Reflection. Now with this video, I'm filming directly to my um, cell phone and at 30 minutes, it always seems to like cut off. So I will probably wrap this painting up before it truly finished. And I apologize for that. Um, if it seems like there's going to be a lot after I'm done, after I pause the camera, then I'll film that up and do it as a separate video. If not, it's just going to be a lot of um, kind of just pushing back and forth in this approach. I may even introduce another color. We'll see. Right now I'm just looking at it through the camera itself. Kind of lets me see it from a distance while I'm working on it. Let's see what's really standing out. It's kind of pushing that brush in there for this far distant 
structures. Structures. There. Some more of that dark. What I may do next time is utilize um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber for my darks. Ultramarine and my black. It's just a habit to kind of darken the corners. I don't mind having texture there, but I like to have it kind of dark and totally close in value. Do the same thing here with the reflection. Kind of let that reflection bleed into the shadow. Some branches. I think a nice addition would be a yellow ochre, but I believe I'm going to admit, oh, leave that out, admit it for right now. Maybe down the line, um, I'll approach this painting again. But we're reaching the 30 minute mark. So it's about time. Call it. Remember, you could just keep going back and forth and playing with it and having fun. So, I'm going to sign off here. Um, once again, please like, subscribe, follow, and I hope you enjoyed. Talk to you all soon.